Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys uh, making some time out of your busy day to spend with me and watch the video. Always grateful for that. And guys, today we're going to be talking about the lost art of pitching and flipping. And I'm also going to talk about why pitching and flipping is the purest form of bass fishing today and uh, sort of have a little conversation on that. Sort of uh, interested to get your guys' opinion on it as well. Um, also, guys, just one quick reminder before we get started, uh, Tackle Warehouse has got their summer kickoff sale going on right now. Got a bunch of good sales on Tackle there. If you guys are interested or need any Tackle, um, if, if you're uh, inclined to do so, you can go to the link I put in my description, my Tackle Warehouse link. You can use that link and bookmark it. And if you do that, it's a really good way to support the channel. The channel gets a small percentage of anything that you uh, purchase from Tackle Warehouse. And a, a big thank you for me and my family, for everybody that's been doing that. really appreciate it. Okay guys, um, flipping and pitching is my favorite way to catch fish. I mean, that's where, that's where I learned, that's where I've had most of my success at. Most of the tournaments I've ever won have come pitching and flipping. And I probably say out of the, you know, I've won around $2 million in fishing tournaments over the years, FLW, Bassmaster, Central Pro-Am, regional events. And I bet probably half of that money has came pitching and flipping either a jig or soft plastic lure. My, absolutely my favorite technique. But the thing that you've seen is, especially in the advent of spotlighting the last three or four years, you're, you're seeing pitching and flipping being a non-factor in tournaments. Now, occasionally if somebody gets in just a freak deal, like if you're down in Florida and somebody gets on a map flipping by it maybe, but if you look at it, if you look at the tournament wins over the past three or four or five years, flipping and pitching are completely absent from it. It's like it doesn't even exist. And I think that probably so many of the newer anglers out there, the, you know, the live scope, you know, forward facing sonar spotlighting generation, most of them don't even know how to flip or pitch. They don't, they, th they think they do, but they don't. So, um, I, that, it's sort of disturbing. The reason why this is disturbing that you don't see pitching and flipping emerge as a key player at almost every event like it used to is the fact that, and this is the main thing I wanna talk about in the video, is pitching and flipping is the purest form. It's the most, um, it's, it's, the, it's the baseline that measures a good angler or not. In my opinion, all of the best anglers out there, all of the really hardcore, primal, instinctive, intuitive, greatest anglers of all time are pitchers and flippers. And here's the reason I say that is, Pitching and flipping is a stealth art, and it's a very complex art. People think that, oh, Randy, you're, you're just so stupid because you don't know how to read a live scope. That's why you don't use it. No, that's, that's kindergarten level. Spotlighting for bass is kindergarten. When you're talking about mastering pitching and flipping, you're talking about a PhD level uh, skill in bass fishing. You got the spotlighters in kindergarten. You got the pitchers and flippers on the PhD program. Here's why I say that. In order for you to be a successful, really good mastering, master at pitching and flipping, you have to take control of more variables than any other technique out there. Number one, when you're pitching and flipping, you are close to your quarry. You are right there on top of the fish. And in order for you to get right on top of those fish and close to those fish where you can generate a strike, you have to be a master at boat maneuvering, boat positioning. You got to understand everything about trolling motor as far as, you know, how your boat speed coming into a piece of cover is affected by wind and current and the size of your boat. You have to understand that you have to learn to glide up to a piece of cover to approach it silently. And then once you do have your boat in position, which is more complicated than what you think to, you can't, some people think they can just slop through an area and catch them, you're not. But once you do get your boat in position, you also have to understand casting angles and you have to break down any piece of cover that you're pitching and flipping to. Because I don't care if you're flipping to a dock, a bush, a lay down tree, a grass bed or whatever, there is a complex interconnectedness within that piece of cover that determines where that fish is positioned at. And the next thing that you have to do is you have to understand how that fish is positioned on that piece of cover. Now, how that fish is positioned on that piece of cover has to do with water clarity, the sunlight, the sunlight angle, the sunlight intensity, the wind direction, the wind speed, the current, everything like that is going to determine 
where your presentation has to be. Because if you don't understand the boat positioning, the casting angle, and how fish use particular cover, you, you might catch one once in a while, but you're not going to be a master pitcher and flipper. So anyway, before I even make a cast, I have to understand boat positioning, casting angle, and I've got to predict where that fish is gonna be positioned at because that's gonna allow me to make my presentation. Now, once you make your presentation, or try to make your presentation of that piece of cover, that is the part that becomes the art form because the, the, the pure art of pitching and flipping a bass like that, it's the most artistic form of fishing there is. It's almost like fly fishing. You're dealing with rhythm and cadence and movement and you've got to put your bait at a certain angle to the water. You've got to let it enter slowly. Sometimes you have to put it right on the target. Sometimes you got to put it six inches past the target. You have to do this with different um, lure weights. Every time that you have a different lure size, that's going to affect how your presentation is made. Um, and then you have to consider out things like, you know, the wind direction, current, all that type of stuff before you make your presentation. And then once you make your presentation, then you have to generate the strike. And sometimes that strike generation is dead sticking. Sometimes it's shaking it. Sometimes it's a small hop. Sometimes it's a large hop. Sometimes you pitch in there and as soon as it hits the bottom, you reel it in. Sometimes you work it all the way back to the boat. Tremendous amount of, you know, determination as far as generating that strike. And then you have to understand how to set the hook based upon the lure that you're using, the pound test, and the type of cover that you're fishing. Some flipping and pitching set hook sets are softer than others. That's another factor into it. And then finally, you have to understand your equipment. You have to you have to know if you're if you need to use 15 pound test line or 25 pound test fluorocarbon or braid. You've got to have the right rod, and most importantly, you've got to have the right bait. And that bait is determined by weight, by profile, by size, and that determination comes from understanding and having an expert knowledge of the as the personality of the bass, what they want at that particular time. Under certain conditions, like under certain water clarity conditions and sky conditions, they may want a jig. They may want, based upon different variables, they may want a green jig, a black jig, a blue jig, you know, a brown jig. And then if you've got a different set of situations, maybe they want a soft plastic bait. Maybe they want a creature profile. Maybe the next time they want a worm. Maybe the next time they want a tube. Maybe the next time they want a grub literally endless amount of lure categories and those lure categories based upon the profile of the lure, the length of the lure, the size of the lure, whether they have a vibrating tail or not, or the straight tail, all that type of stuff is determined by the mood and the personality of the fish that the pitcher and flipper has got to understand. In other words, guys, pitching and flipping is the highest form of art in bass fishing. It's the most complex, difficult, um, rewarding, exciting way to fish that there is. And it's just depressing to me that we've seen these cheater boxes take away uh, flipping and pitching as a way, as a means of excelling in most of these tournaments. I mean, back guys, between like the time I started fishing tournaments in the eighties, up until probably about um, 2000 and, you know, seven, 2008, flipping and pitching was a dominant player in every single tournament. Lots of tournaments every year were one pitching and flipping. There were guys that did nothing but pitch and flip. And the advent of technology has basically robbed that art form away from us and turned us into a bunch of kindergartners that just look at a video screen all day long. So anyway, just wanted to run that by you. Hope you guys are well. We'll talk later.